Greetings once again. As you can say, uh, see, I've made uh, some progress here for part two of this antenna uh, video. And uh, I remember I told you I was going to run up the uh, twin lead antenna wire and then put a connector on each end and fasten it to the uh, underside of these two flat washers on these screws. Well, that's been done. So now you can see it uh, as it's in its finished uh, appearance. Now, and then I, I clamped down these two bolts. I made them nice and long so I'd have plenty of uh, room to do it. And you can see that there's sort of a, uh, a bow in that thing, but it does not hurt the uh, insulation on this wire. And that's because it's nice and thick and strong. So that's a real good strain relief right there. Uh, on the other side, uh, both both of the, uh, di the dipole uh, wires are now fastened up, and uh, everything's looking good. I may do a few little adjustments on it before I hang it in the tree. Uh, I did take, uh, I've sprayed everything with uh, clear enamel, all the bolts and nuts and everything. I put about two or three coats on it. Uh, we still have more to do to weatherproof this thing. And uh, the other end uh, of the uh, the other end of this uh, flat lead also has to have a connector put on it, either a connector, or I will somehow uh, solder it directly to the RG58 coax cable that will go into the house. And of course, if I solder it directly, I'll have to weatherproof it, and uh, I may wind up uh, putting it inside a small piece of PVC uh, pipe with a cap on each end. I haven't quite figured that out yet. I've been working every day and haven't had a whole lot of time to, to mess with this. In fact, uh, today's Saturday and I've got to go to work in a couple hours and work all night until 6 tomorrow morning. So this thing will have to set once again until I can uh, get back to it. One of these days I'll be retired and I won't have to do all that. So, uh, as you can see, the, the old cutting board, that uh, really thick plastic cutting board, has uh, been whittled down quite a bit. Uh, I, uh, it's, it looks like it's going to take care of all my needs with this antenna. Uh, I, of course, cut this uh, strain relief piece out of it, and I made two insulators. Uh, you'll notice that one hole is a little closer to the edge than the other. Uh, the reason is I'm going to take two more of these uh, thimbles, these things right here, and I'm going to put them uh, at the very end uh, where the hole is closest to the edge. And I'm going to wrap the wire around it the same way I did right here. And I'm going to set up the same kind of deal right here and clamp it nice and tight. Uh, there won't be a big loop left over like there is here. It'll just sort of be a little tail about like that from my thumb back to the, uh, back to the clamp, about right in there. And uh, the other end, of course, will be where I tie a rope. And uh, the rope is what will go up into the tree. And uh, as it goes up, it'll haul the, uh, the end of the uh, antenna wire up there with it. So I'll show you that when I uh, get that all set up. Some more progress has been made. Uh, as you can see, I put the, uh, the thimbles and the, uh, the uh, insulators on the end of the wire. And uh, I gave them uh, a re about three really heavy coats of uh, clear enamel. Now keep in mind that clear enamel will wear off uh, from the weather within probably a year around here. So it's just there as an added precaution that, uh, uh, that every little bit helps keep these things from, from rusting. And uh, even, now, even though this is supposed to be galvanized uh, metal, it, you know, corrosion will set in. And I also found out the name <coughs> of these little things right here. They're called cable ferrules. F E R R U L E, a cable ferrule. Eh, well, so we all learned something new. All right, back up here to this piece. Uh, you can see that I took some uh, electrical tape and wrapped it around and around and around and around the uh, metal portions of this for some added weatherproofing. And uh, when I get done, and I well, when I get uh, the time, I'm going to take some liquid tape and put over the top of it. Uh, in particular, this area right here where the metal uh, thimble comes through. Uh, some of it will wear off, of course, just from movement of the wind. But once again, I gave these bolt, these uh, <coughs> screw heads and uh, everything underneath this black uh, electrical tape, I gave it a, another very heavy coating 
of clear enamel. And I will put the uh, electric, the uh, liquid tape over the top of this. I'm going to do everything I can to weatherproof this so it lasts, you know, at least three years, you know. I'm, and uh, I also put a very heavy uh, coat once more of the clear enamel on the back. Now, I haven't put any electrical tape on this, on these uh, insulators. The reason being is once I get this uh, uh, antenna up in the tree, and I get the coax cable connected to the TV flat wire. Uh, then Glenn King, you met him uh, in earlier videos uh, in the first, or in the, actually the uh, second and third video, and, and maybe the fourth. Uh, he has what's called an antenna analyzer. And once I, he told me, once I get the antenna up in the tree, and uh, I get the coax cable connected, he will bring his antenna analyzer over, and he will run a, uh, or he, he will run an SWR check on the antenna. And if uh, I have any uh, bounce back, you know, any standing wave ratio, and the antenna needs to be like shortened maybe a little bit on each end, then I'll have to pull it down out of the tree, disconnect all this stuff, and lop off a couple of inches here and there, depending on what he tells me to do. Uh, he'll be the director, I'll be the gopher. And then, of course, we'll put it back together, and back up into the tree it'll go. And we'll keep doing this until we get a really good tuned antenna, as far as standing wave ratio goes. Uh, incidentally, these uh, G5RV antennas, uh, we used uh, a G5RV uh, during field day, 2010. Uh, if you'll look back in a couple of the uh, videos, you'll see our field day. I did uh, three or four field day videos, and we were able to talk all over the United States and uh, on that G5RV antenna. So I'm expecting some pretty good things out of this. Uh, I don't know if I'll reach overseas, but we're going to give it a good try. This is the liquid tape I was uh, telling you about, if you've never seen it. It's nothing but a kind of a gooey black substance uh, and a brush that goes down into the can. And uh, you put it over electrical contacts, things like that, that perhaps you can't uh, wrap up with tape. They're kind of in an oddball, such, uh, you know, oddball uh, location. Uh, but the, it, it can also be used for something like this. It's not a permanent type of solution for insulating, but it will do the job. Uh, I'm using it here for weatherproofing, not insulation. Now, of course, on the back it says, hey, uh, don't use it in the sunlight, on breezy conditions, or humidity. Now, the way I see that, I, I guess I can't use it in the state of Arkansas. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and use it this morning. Let me open this baby up and get, get working with it, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now, there it is, the black gooey substance. And uh, it's just a matter of painting it on. I'm just going to smear it across the tape there, cover the entire thing over to put it down the uh, put it down the uh, wire a little bit. Now, according to the instructions, it says put on two coats, and it takes four hours to dry. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put on two coats. Okay, here it is after the first coating. Uh, keep in mind that when you make an antenna. Uh, the two things have to always be observed. They're, the, they're your priority. It, uh, the antenna has to be functional and it has to be durable. Uh, you don't want an antenna that you put up and uh, you know six months later has to come down because it's already rusting and corroding and you've got all kinds of problems or wires have broken off or something of that nature. Or it's, So I'm not concerned much with pretty, you know. It, pretty is not one of the priorities on an antenna. I want this thing to stay up for, like I said, at least three years. So I don't know if it will, but I'm going to do my best. And uh, I'll go ahead and put another coat on here. And then uh, the next video, uh, I should have my coax uh, RG58 cable uh, connected to the uh, to the end of uh, my flat wire. And I'm having a little trouble coming up with RG58. It's incredible. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to get some. I can't. I'm going to have to do a little searching around the net or try to find somebody that has some for sale. And uh, hopefully the next time you see me, I'll have all that done. It'll take at least probably two more videos to get this thing up in the air and uh, get it ready to hook to the, get it ready to hook to the uh, antenna tuner that I'm uh, currently trying to talk my wife into buying for me. So until then, uh, just stand by to stand by.